Hey guys, before I start my talk, here's a small game for everyone to participate. Well, imagine you are walking on the street and you bumped into a man in rags. He said that he was really hungry and begged you to buy him some food. Since you're really generous, you bought him a hamburger. After he ate it up, you found out that he was actually a magician. To repay your kindness, he promised that he will fulfill one of your wish, and he provides you with five choices: a, one hundred thousand dollars; b, a new car; c, a mansion; d, an admission letter to your dream school; and e, elixir of life. So, which one would you choose? Now think carefully and choose your wish. Raise up your hand after you have made up your mind. Just let me know. Thank all of you for participating, and now you can put down your hands. According to my questionnaire survey, about 75% people made their decision in 15 seconds after reading the question. If you have a similar response time and raise up your hand quickly, then it means that you do not suffer from decidophobia and your mind is decisive and clear. However, if you hesitate for about 30 to 60 seconds before raising your hand, then there's a chance of you having the cytophobia. Have you guys noticed that the word the cytophobia has been mentioned for several times? So, what exactly is the cytophobia? The cytophobia is the paralyzing fear of making a wrong decision. In a nutshell, the cytophobia happens when a person is unable to make a decision when faced with multiple choices. Most of us will only have a little anxiety in some situations, but people suffering from the cytophobia will experience extreme anxiety or have a panic attack when they need to make a conclusion. They may also have other symptoms such as rapid heartbeat, difficulty breathing. Sweating, tremors, and chest or stomach pain. Procrastination may also happen due to the fear of making a wrong choice, which causes you to put off making options for as long as possible. Having the cytophobia will also influence our daily life. For instance, you may put a strain on your relationship with loved ones as you leave them to make big choices alone. Which causes them to try and please you, but without knowing what you want. Although the cytophobia is not an extremely dangerous disease in the short term, if left untreated, it can lead to various problems that can negatively impact an individual's life. The fear of making decisions can result in missing opportunities for personal growth, career advancement, and achieving goals. It, nevertheless, it may even erode self-esteem and confidence in one's ability. What's worse, the ongoing fear and anxiety can contribute to heightened stress level and psychological distress. In the long run, it may even lead to depression, harming both your mental and physical health. Honestly speaking, I'm a person who struggles with decidophobia. I struggle with hundreds of little choices every day, such as deciding what to eat for lunch, what to wear on weekends, and what to major in when I go to university, and so on. Even when I have to pick out the topic for my TED talk, I didn't make up my mind until deadline approached. Tell you guys a secret: if there's no deadline, you probably won't see me standing here, as I'm still at home trying to decide what to say. Being too conflict has already become a major annoyance in my life. Instead of paying attention to my needs and insist, I would focus on gathering a lot of information or soliciting others' opinion to help me make a conclusion. With the passage of time, the problem caused by decidophobia has deeply troubled me. I'm very eager to change this bad habit. But I have never been able to become a more decisive and determined person. But finally, 
a casual conversation with my teacher strengthened my determination to overcome this cytophobia. One random day, when I was trying to decide what to major in when I go to university, I found out that I have no idea about it. I got stuck in a worry loop and start panicking. I was like, "Oh dear, I can't make an option between these two majors. It is so hard to choose." I thought her response would be something like, "Maybe you should choose this one," but in fact, she said something that I would never forget. Just believe in yourself. By seeing my shocking face, she continued, "Well, no matter how long you've been struggling." You still have to make a decision in the end. No one can always be by your side and help you whenever you need them. I can help you this time, but how about next time? Being more strong-minded, independent, and decisive can save you a lot of time. The time you wasted on making choices and psychological intrusion can be used on things that are more meaningful. Such as improving your understanding and skills. Afterwards, I pondered over this conversation alone for a long time. I found out that this kind of thought has never crossed my mind before. Wow, what a brilliant idea! Therefore, I immediately made up my mind to surmount the cytophobia. So, are you guys willing to join me and deal with it together? If yes, then we can start by figuring out some of the potential causes of it. First possible explanation is that phobias are often learned. There may have been a time in your life that it is useful or necessary to let others take charge of making an option for you. As a result, you may have to learn to avoid making decisions. For instance, when I was young, my parents would help me make most of the choices. I have strong adaptability, so I take up every single choices my parents offered, such as the piano lessons and fencing classes. Although I enjoyed it participating in all of them, I still develop a bad habit of used to accepting determinations from others, and do not have a definite view of my own. Alternatively, you may also have learned your anxiety as a child from family members who displayed anxious or stressed behaviors. Another possible reason is that you made some decisions in the past that turns out badly, and you generalize it from "I messed that one up" to "I'm always making wrong decisions." Therefore, phobia happens when one bad event gets generalized into fearing all similar events. Alternatively, genetic factors may also play a role in the development of phobias. Anxiety disorders may run in some family members and pass on genetically. Finally, one possible reason that I concluded by myself is that parents are very, very strict, and they hope that their child can do things perfectly. So, in order not to make their parents mad, children become wary of making decisions or doing things. But. Do not be afraid if you suffer from the cytophobia like me, as there are many ways to tackle this issue. Cognitive behavior therapy (CBT) helps individuals identify and challenge negative thought patterns. This exposure therapy gradually involves exposing individuals in decision-making situations and help them develop coping mechanisms to help them make decisions. You can also try and engage in supportive counseling, which will help you become a more decisive and determined person by helping you develop effective decision-making skills. If none of these treatments are effective to you, you can try take some medicines in conjunction with therapy. Last but not the least, I could recommend you most to learn some relaxation skills, such as deep breathing exercises. Progressive muscle relaxation or mindfulness can all help individuals reduce anxiety and become a more determined person. Or you could just go outdoor with your loved ones and unwind your mind and body. Being a person who suffers from decidophobia, I figured out some interesting ways to make a decision. 
The first method is to use a spinner. On the spinner, you can write down all the choices that are uncertain. Spin the wheel, and you can easily obtain the choice as you can take the one that the pointer choose for you. The second method is to play rock, paper, scissors. For example, when trying to decide what to eat for lunch, my friend will represent food A. I will represent food B. We will play rock, paper, scissors, and whoever wins will be the pick. So if you guys have difficulty in making choices, you could refer to some of these interesting ways, and they could help you a lot. So my friends, do you know that we humans have to make options for over hundreds, thousands, millions of times during our lifetime? But only 0.1% are ones that really matters our life. Consequently, rest of them are just ordinary matters next to nothing. So, just face these choices boldly, even during entangled circumstances, because do not be afraid of making mistakes. Instead, we should be afraid of standing still. So, just believe in yourself and follow your heart and trust that everything will turn out exactly as you wish. Thank you.